Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores the world through the lens of astrology, with a view to supporting you through the crazy ups and downs and helping you make more confident decisions through life's chapters. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for Radio's The Bob and Sherry Show. And this episode is all about Mars moving into Pisces on Friday, the 22nd of March, 2024. Mars is the complement of Venus. Mars is an outgoing, ambitious symbol, masculine in nature. And while it's in the sign of Pisces, there may be lack of clarity on what to do or secret moves and actions taken behind the scenes. I use a combination of traditional, modern, Western astrology while cross-referencing degree theory and including decans in this analysis. This episode explores the three main themes of Mars in Pisces. For the more in-depth sign-by-sign analysis, head over to the Horoscope Vault on Patreon or get yourself subscriber-only episode access here on Spotify for a small monthly subscription. As the ancient god of war, Mars represents struggles both within yourself and with others. Astrology has a very strong mythological component. The ancients gave the planets, constellations and such some stories because prior to the advances in tech astronomy that we have now, they thought these bodies in the sky were figures and gods and connected their movements to things happening on Earth. When big changes occurred down here, they would look for answers up there, which isn't wrong. Any talk of climate change is kind of in the same vein. Humans are looking at what's going on in the atmosphere and its impact on food, soil and human existence. But back to Mars, the planet of war and passion and action. Through this connection, it is closely related to physical energy. War isn't lazy and neither is Mars usually. It's very animated and further expressions and symbols include desire, courage, initiative, executive ability, assertiveness, aggressiveness, impulsiveness, adventurousness, its self-will, its resistance, and it's also intimacy-based love. Mars rules Aries, and in traditional astrology, the sign of Scorpio too. So the sign of Pisces, which Mars is making its way into, is sleepy and private. Pisces is a psychic sign and represents much more than the physical self. It's the entire experience altogether. It embodies a little bit of every sign that comes before it, which turns out to be quite confusing because of the many, many natures of the entire zodiac wheel. Collecting all of that information from every sign that comes prior to Pisces, of course, is going to be confusing. And it's ruled by Neptune. Pisces is elusive. It's unsure. It's got so much information that it can't see clearly, or it's got so much information that it becomes dreamy and idealistic. And on the note of dreams, it does point to the nighttime in that way, because when the unconscious sleep-based dreams happen, this represents the depth of the subconscious, superconscious, unconscious parts of the psyche, and all other action is entirely switched off. So when transiting Mars, all about energy and drive, enters Pisces, which represents sleep, you may become nocturnal finding it more challenging to wake up in the morning and equally difficult to go to bed at a decent time at night. If you can factor this in, if you can plan for that by either aligning with something that helps you sleep or making sure you do something exhausting at the end of the day to wear yourself out or just accept it and let yourself be a night owl for the duration of this transit, which lasts until April 30th, you do have options to handle this experience. Be cautious with the former suggestion of sleep aids. Pisces is the sign of mind-altering substances. With Mars in this sign, there's the potential of developing a physical dependency on these things. This isn't a weak mind or a mental addiction. It's Mars being the physical body. It's so much more of a chemical matter. The potential of ruining natural sleep cycles through sleep aids is a possibility. So do be very, very careful if you reach for a nightcap or sleep medicine. Maybe try and exhaust all the other possibilities first. The days seem short. The nights stretch into this deliriously long territory. That in itself can be an energetic challenge. Motivation can be difficult when night and day have this kind of flipped 
inverse merging presentation. Looking at Pisces on the wheel, it's axis. This is the idea of sister sign combinations, where Aries is sistered with Libra, Taurus is sistered with Scorpio, Gemini is sistered with Sagittarius, Cancer with Capricorn, Leo with Aquarius, and Virgo with Pisces. And this usually comes up on the weekly horoscope as your sister sign, aka your earth sign. It's the sign opposite yours on the wheel with this one, the Virgo Pisces axis. It's the act of doing, which is Virgo, and the result of what has been done, which is Pisces. This means that a lot of conclusive matters right now are because of an action that was taken back around mid-July 2023. If you can look back through emails and text messages, thinking hard to what you were getting active on during that time. What did you start then? What did you begin? Where was all your energy going? And how is that matter going right now? These are all good reflection points for this transit. This Virgo Pisces axis is also a food axis on the astrology wheel. Virgo is the world of natural food, grains and plants. And Pisces is more like the supplemental world during the Mars through Pisces time frame. You might benefit from a strong supplement routine, but of course this isn't medical diagnosis or advice. Make sure to check that out professionally first. Pisces is also intuitive eating. So it's picking foods based on what you feel like having in the moment. This is not the best time for really rigorous and strict meal prepping. Have everything that you might want ready, but have what you want to have in that moment. In general, this is a time where going with the flow really is necessary in all ways, yet somehow it's challenging. It's a time where executive function like mental skills, memory, flexible thinking, self-control are all heavily impacted by actions of consumption and health hygiene or habitual behaviours. Mars in Pisces can be a bit like nothing is ever how it truly seems. There is a passage through the wreckage though, and it may be littered with extreme emotional activity and internal crises that are made to feel worse than they truly are by this moment of depleted energy. It's nearly six weeks of lethargy, a short month and a half-ish spell that leaves you kind of listless. And it's easy to lose your sense of purpose and most of the might you have could be used up in fighting inner battles during this time. Touching back on the element of Pisces being intoxicating, you could experience this almost poisoned love or maybe an illicit passion. I hate to deliver this particular message, but affairs, secret intimate connections, or relationships that feel like a drug, or even actual drugs impacting relationships. There is no doubt that this will increase sensitivity and all kinds of boundaries get blurry. Alongside all of this merging and blending and uncertainty, there are three main points that are likely to inflame triggers during this transit, causing personal internal reactions that need attention. The first main point in the first two weeks is to do with how you personally view abundance. This is not manifesting. We had a strong manifesting point a few weeks ago around March the 8th, but this now is integration where your understanding of abundance is assessed in hindsight. So abundance is always seen as growth or it's seen as having more or as some kind of expansion. And conclusively, Mars through Pisces is a time frame of understanding the full cycle of abundance and the fact that it's to do with decrease as much as it is to do with increase. It's an appreciation of the complete pattern and requires peace, even while a situation appears to be in decline. And a really good example of the abundant motion of increase and decrease is the sun. So it rises in the morning, which is the increase of light. And then around noon, it begins to move towards decrease as it prepares to set. And the lesson of the first two weeks of Mars moving through Pisces is that since abundance exists entirely, whenever it leaves, it will always return in cycles. So you don't need to worry. You don't need to try. You need to recognize your own pattern of abundance. Maybe it could be beneficial or helpful to learn your own chart's abundance cycle, which can be helped via a reading. I'll pop the link to book a reading below. The second two weeks of this transit is interestingly about cycles. The key word is actually completion, meaning completion of a recent cycle. And it's about changing your perspective, 
moving forward from doubt and elevating it into something that's more pleasantly useful. Doubt is inevitable at this point. When something ends, it's always going to be there. But it's more fun and enjoyable and helpful when you switch the word doubt for the word research. It goes from becoming a negative perspective to a helpful ally while still being the same thing, essentially. Doubt is to not know. And changing that to research, which means seeking to know, suggests that literally researching the next step instead of doubting it, investigating the possibilities instead of lingering in uncertainty of what's next, is the way to enjoy this transition experience. Everything's going to be different once you close this chapter out. And from these mid two weeks around April 7th onwards, everything's accompanied with a big fat question mark, which could feel scary, but is supposed to be understood as a desire to arrive at truth. It's interesting the keyword of completion happens the day before the big, huge solar eclipse in Aries on April 8th. A solar eclipse is just a much, much stronger new moon, and a new moon, with the keyword being new, is just a fresh cycle opener. And I'll be releasing a specific episode on the April eclipse nearer the time, but it is a worthy momentary mention here because it kind of bolsters this Mars through Pisces transit with its midway theme of completion of a large life direction cycle and starting a new one with doubt, but trying to maybe morph that doubt into excitement, curiosity and discovery. The third theme of Mars moving through Pisces is darkness. The final week and a half from around April 20th to April 30th highlights how some situations may have become entangled or how emotion and illusion have somehow overridden strength. And the thing about darkness isn't all that bad if you remind yourself that for something to be highlighted, everything else must become dark in comparison. The things surrounding you or surrounding whatever you're supposed to be focusing on, the things around that become dark. So this final couple of weeks may come with feelings and reactions of other people that seem to be filled with guilt and manipulation and stress. A lot of that darkness where others or even your own self tries to use you know, the vulnerability of your past as a weapon, that darkness that shows up is to be ignored. Because there's a light pointing at something somewhere else that's saying, hey, this is where I need your focus to be. These bad things show up so that you ignore them on purpose. You're not responsible for the feelings, the perspectives and the reactions of other people. So it may be appropriate to forgive them for their narrow-mindedness in the moment or their blinkeredness. But absolutely don't forget how they behave. Just turn and dim the lights down on them and see where the light remains shining because that's where you are meant to be going. This next five or so weeks through to April 30th will require you to work independently on your own, to take action privately, to not share or explain anything to anyone except yourself, to explore newness with excitement. Any healing that needs to be done can be at its most effective now. So get soothing foot massages. Check in with your supplements. Check out of toxic substances. Though Mars is not very well placed in Pisces, with the fieriness drowned out by the water sign, kind of diluting desire, diluting energy, it's not an altogether completely wasted experience. For Aries, this is irritability and a lot of situations under the wrong impression. For Taurus, this is about balancing your goals and bolstering your low energy by connecting with people of the same interests as you. Gemini, it's a time of ignoring authoritative people who seem to be trying to stop your progress. Cancer, this could be some legal paperwork difficulties or challenges or steps showing up that require surrender in order to be fixed or something to do with changing your belief system to remove obstacles in your way. Leo, conflict with people you cannot escape shapes your current reality. Virgo, this phase requires some true compromise. Libra, this is working hard despite maybe not having the energy, and having zero energy left over at the end of the day for any kind of leisure. Scorpio, you'll need to keep busy with more enjoyable, fun activities. Sagittarius, home life may become a bit difficult. Capricorn, you'll need to voice your opinions more loudly to make sure you're being heard and not drowned out by others. Aquarius, matters of property, finances and earnings could be uncertain and unclear. And Pisces, you could find an increased sensitivity or insensitivity that impacts just about everything in your existence. To get the full, complete magnitude of what Mars moving through Pisces for the next five and a half weeks means for your sign, go to the episode playlists, 
find the Mars through Pisces for each sign episode and subscribe to access the detailed bonus content. Get lots of rest and I'll be back with another episode soon. Until then, bye.